Hi, we've got our A-Liner Ranger 10 about, about a year and a half ago. Uh, we run into a, a bunch of little details that we wanted to upgrade and change, uh, make it more convenient to use, etc. And we're going to share those in this video. In our particular A-Liner, the corner of the cabinets tree here underneath was just a dead space. There was lots of room under there, but the only access was going in through this cabinet. Pulling the shelves out and reaching behind was almost useless as is. So what we decided to do is put a garbage can in the corner. Bought one from, I believe it was Walmart, that was just the correct size. Cut a hole that it simply drops into. It also gives access to the space underneath the garbage. Uh, that's where we keep our lithium travel battery and a little storage for lightweight things, swim, tool, swim noodles and paper towels, that sort of thing. And when we don't need to get in there, the rest of the time it's just a garbage can. Easy enough. In our small A-liner, we typically leave the bed down almost all the time. Uh, a little bit difficult to make because it's in a corner and everything. But that created a problem when we're using the sink. For almost any reason, you almost always had some kind of splashback, partially because the sink is fairly shallow. So what we did is we put a piece of coroplast I got from Home Depot. The only modification I actually made is to round the edge so it's not sharp. Um, it works pretty good for keeping all the splash off the bed. And when it's time to travel, it just lifts out and we slide it under the mattress. Easy. In our little A-liner, the air conditioner is quite effective. It's built into the corner of the unit, unfortunately, and it doesn't circulate especially well into the far side of the bed, especially when it's hot out. So what we did is we bought a very small little fan, which just sits in the corner. And when we're on the air conditioner, we run the fan, which blows the air sideways, circulates it through the whole room, much more even temperature around the entire thing, especially for the person that's sleeping way in the corner. Easy. Okay, another issue with A-liners is the hinge mechanism for lifting the roof up and down is made of aluminum and is right against where you need to sleep. This is the mattress and there it is. You wind up touching it in cold weather. It's quite cold when it touches your body. Uh, the easiest way we found to solve this problem is to use self-adhesive carpet tiles. Just cut them to size and stuck them on and really takes care of the problem fairly well. Uh, got them at Walmart. It's just these, the particular ones we're using. Uh, they were, I think, about $16 for the box. It's probably almost three times as much as we needed to do the camper. But the problem solved. Uh, another easy one. For another bit of convenience storage while we're camping, uh, we wanted something near the bed that we could actually reach from bed. Uh, so we wound up using this little bag that's, I think, for like a shower caddy sort of thing. Originally held up just by some command hooks, which have stayed on just fine. They haven't slipped or moved at all. Um, don't put a whole lot of weight in here, just for keys and whatnot, but it works well. The A-liner beds have a nice storage area underneath them. Unfortunately, it's difficult to get at. Uh, there's no hinges or mechanisms to help lift it up and hold it up into place. Uh, there's a website I spotted that I'll put a link to that gives these strut numbers that are just automotive and the end pieces to go with them at both sides, and there's two of them. They actually make it very easy to pop up, uh, even with a heavier mattress on top. It just lifts it up easily and you can get out the place. Well worth doing. Okay, another minor thing with this type of trailer, A-frames, etc. is they don't come with any kind of a screen door. Uh, usually not too much of an issue, but occasionally it'd be kind of nice to have one. What our solution was to get one of the magic doors that you can get for full-size uh, patio doors. Purchased it. Um, they just snap together with magnets in the middle very very easily and snap right back together all on their own. Uh, what we did have to do was modify it slightly because it was simply way too big for the space. In ours we have this angled doorway so what my wife did was cut it to the correct size, make an edge on it to hang in velcro all around the perimeter and it snaps up into place in just a few seconds each time we're here and stores in a little bag when we actually don't need it. Uh, works out pretty good. It's kept out the bugs pretty well and actually snaps together easily. This tip falls under the category of both maintenance and upgrade. Uh, we had to replace the tires that came with our 2014 A-Liner because they were seven years old and at that point they're just getting risky for blowouts just from age and not being worn out at all. Went online, found out I was able to get radial tires to replace the original bias ply tires, so I went ahead and went with the Carlisle brand radial trails, put them on, didn't expect anything more than possibly longer tire life because they're radials. Uh, turns out they also run cooler, and I boosted my mileage on the highway by nearly one. I'm 
usually averaging over 27 while towing, or before it was barely 26. Um, I'm going to call this an upgrade for about the same price as the bias flies, our landing price difference. On our A-liner, there is no great water tank. Uh, most people just allow the water to drip out onto the ground, wherever they might be. Not always a good idea. Some places you can't do that. Other places like where we're at now, where the hill goes, it would bring the water right underneath to the other side where all of our chairs and everything are. So what we like to do is an old laundry detergent container with a pot collapsible funnel. Fills up about two gallons. It easily lasts a day or two for our usage. Walk it off someplace appropriate. And when it's done, you can seal it up. And it fits through the side storage hatch on the back of the A-liner. So travel with it's no big deal either. Easy. On our A-liner, we elected to go with a lithium battery, which meant it no longer had to be on the tongue here. It's mounted inside, inside of a cabinet. That allowed us to have this battery box, which was still here, to be used for something else entirely. It's where we keep the wood to go under the legs and the jack stands, etc. And I kept the stubs from the electrical here in case I ever want to revert. We also have a toolbox mounted onto the tongue and a space where a second propane tank could have been. Uh, this particular unit didn't come with a second propane tank from the factory. It was just an open space. So all the tools and odds and ends we carry that need to get out often are out here on this waterproof box. Easy. One of the things we ran into when we got our camper is realizing we couldn't see out the back very well. It's just a little bit too tall to see over the top of from the car I took tow with. Uh, so we got a backup camera. I'm not going to go into detail on the camera itself because it turned out to not be especially good. I'm probably going to replace it, lose connection, etc. But the mounting system worked out well. Uh, it is just a paint stick that I got from Goodwill. A new one's probably maybe 10 bucks at Home Depot. And I just used hose clamps to hold it on to the uh, tire mount. Um, up at the top, I used a plastic buckle so I can unsnap and take it away if I need to. If I don't want to leave it out attached to the camper, I can just pop it off. And I just ran some wiring down to the tail light to run it off the camper's power system so I'd never have to have a battery on it or anything else. Uh, mount system good, camera not so good. Okay, on A-frame and type campers, A-liners included, they don't come with a factory on them because there's no way to easily mount something like that. You have to create your own. Uh, what we wound up doing was taking plastic PVC conduit, I believe it's half inch size, and mounted it with the straps for those, just pop rivets right through the metal, easy. Mounts up very nicely. Inside of it is a half inch steel conduit that basically just telescopes out when you need it um, simply by pulling the pin, sliding it in. When it's all the way in, the second hole is exposed, which allows it just to lock in place so it can't come apart while traveling. The awning was, uh, we just made out of a big rectangular piece of otter text I got offline. Stitched into a loop at each end and it just slides on. Um, relatively easy, same thing at the, at the peak. Basically slide on place and at the end at the peak, we have a washer which keeps it from sliding off. So when you're assembling it, you simply drop, before you lift the roof, you slide it onto both ends after extending the rods over the top and then you lift the roof and your awning is up. Nothing to it. Mm -hmm.